this is Fee and I'm on back on to a bit of a whip and chat um, back onto the uh, South African trip and the Kruger my Kruger Leopard um, so next this one is um, the next day which was the hang on I'll just have a look at the date I think it was the 23rd yeah, 23rd of September. Now, that's the day we travelled to Swaziland. Um, so we spent a lot of time in the bus that day. But we also travelled through, obviously from South Africa to Swaziland. Swaziland's a different country. Um, so we had to go through border security uh, for that, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so in the morning we got up and it was a pretty relaxed morning, it wasn't too bad. Um, Nathan had made, well we'd made some friends on, on the trip obviously while we're doing it, but one of the guys, Jim, who was an Aussie, um, avid, avid photographer, he had so many cameras, it was fascinating to see, um, but, oops, move that. So Nathan got a lot of technical advice on using his camera. Um, which was really good, really good. But they went off walking around the hippie, hippo hollow um, in the morning before we left. And... Uh, uh, just trying to recall what had happened they disappeared and they've come back um nathan's got these photos so they had been fortunate enough to find one of the peacocks on the ground that actually did a full display of their feathers so spread them out spread them out they were magnificent absolutely magnificent um, wasn't much we did oh gosh we complained about roadworks in Australia we, well, actually wherever you go you complain when there's road of works I mean I know at the moment we've got massive roadworks at our around our area but we got caught up in some roadworks so it goes the light flickering again um, and with this roadworks, it's rather humorous where the roadworks were. Because we'd stopped on the bus and it was like, oh, well, you're going to be here for a while. And the next thing you know, you see these people come around and held, held up high. Now, we'll zoom you out. Um, yeah, where people held um, up high baskets of stuff. So you could see what they were... Um, well you basically you couldn't go anywhere so they were trying to sell their wares to any vehicles any cars that coming through and like we were probably sixth seventh bus in a row so they would have done a really good good business just with the tourist buses but we brought well Nathan spotted one that was um, something one of them was selling nuts so he's grabbed his wallet and piled out and grabbed, gone up to buy some. And next thing you know, <laughs> the bus starts to move along um, without, with the driver not realising. So Craig, our guide, had realised, but the driver hadn't realised that um, someone had gotten off. Um, so we'd gone down, only, only a couple of metres we he moved on and the, the bus moved and like we called out to say, hey, there's someone not on there. And we sat there for another five minutes waiting for Nathan to barter his way down the cost of a couple of bags of salted macadamia nuts. So we would have could have gotten through the um, roadblocks, uh, the roadworks a lot quicker if Nathan hadn't have decided to hop off the bus and get food. Um, so yeah, that was that was the start of it. Um, a lot of driving in that place a lot 
that was a long distance day it wasn't the longest we traveled but we were in the bus just about the whole day um, the whole morning we were in the bus just driving by little town after little town um, we um, so then we got after we finally got through this about lunchtime we got through to Swaziland and so to go through Swaziland you actually get st your passport gets stamped out so that you left um, you, your where you currently are on your passport is what's called no man's land so you get stamped out and then you got to walk a hundred meters down the road or down the track to get to Swaziland so you know you go <laughs> just to go get your border set you so you were in we were standing there in no man's land for about half an hour it's really really funny um, weird concept weird concept to go oh well we went and stood in no man's land most of the borders when you go in and out of borders they you stamped out you stamped in at the same time um, well, it wasn't it wasn't the case with this one we was it just trying to uh, just, some of it's a bit fuzzy so some of the stories I'm trying to remember some of the bits um, but between that's right between stamping out of South Africa and uh, before we stamped into Swaziland we were taken into a Swazi village so we've gone into this no man's land of a village um, and we've had they've told us about their culture um, we went into one of the huts um, and then we were treated to um, a dance well, well, a performance. Uh, so they perform for us, and I'll try and put I'll put some videos up of the performance. But it was really cool, really cool to see. Um, and they did manage to get, <coughs> excuse me, they did manage to get Nathan up, and then they did manage to get me up. So uh, there'll be some bit of footage of both Nathan and I dancing and I'll try and put it in around about here. see what my partner looks like hopefully he doesn't eventually find my youtube channel and sees it but um but yeah so that's 
we had it was a brilliant brilliant day so we did that uh, it was a brilliant um, thing to do tour whatever um, excursion I suppose would be the best way to put it absolutely brilliant to do uh, the people were really nice and friendly we uh, after the performance and after we danced um, we went and had, sat and had lunch um, and then from lunch <coughs> we went and got our passport stamped and entered into Swaziland now Our, our trip into Swaziland was ruined because of where we stayed. Um, we we travelled through um, some mountains, you know, some high ranges and that. Um, got hit with massive, amazing thunder and lightning storm. Uh, went into a glass factory where we watched people blow glass. Um, Nathan brought some stuff what he brought I don't know what he brought I know he brought some gifts there for his family and it was beautiful stuff but I wasn't game enough to buy any because you know just I don't like carding glassware around but Nathan did and they packaged it well and ye yes it made it home safely um, so we saw that and then we were in Swaziland itself so we're told all about the king. So Swaziland is ruled by a king. Um, and I think it was he takes a new wife every year that he's alive or something like that. We guess so the guys were enjoying the story and I'm just more like going, yeah, okay. Um, some interesting stories about their lifestyle. So you hear about a lot about the king. Not really hear much about the people. I don't recall much being about the people except for those the ones that we um, went on that little excursion with. But what I can say is the bit that stands up to us in Swaziland was the accommodation. The accommodation was um, not good. So we were, you know, we haven't had much dealing with porters and morning tips and stuff like that. But we had this porter bring, bring our luggage up. You know, we've we've already in the room, and he brings us brings the bags up while we're in the room. And he sees like Nathan and I've got our hats on the bench, and he's like he's looked at the hats and he's picked them up and. And not knowing whether it's their culture or customs or what, but he's picked it up and put it on and basically told Nathan to give him the hat. <laughs> uh, it was just like really, really odd, really odd. But we felt, we actually felt intimidated by him and the way he spoke. So, but yet again, that may have been his culture, but you know, for Nathan to go, Nathan to turn around and go, no, nah, he doesn't like him. He was very uncomfortable with him. And when we weren't out of the room, it was, um, we kept an eye out to see if we spotted him because we, Nathan didn't trust him. Oh, shush both. So, yeah. Um, Oh, pardon me. Oh, I'm not good. It's not even... It's middle of the day. Um, so, yeah, that was... That was outside of it. It was also... Um, how do you put it? Just trying to work out. There was rugby playing. It was the Rugby World Cup, which was being played. Um, which, obviously, they all get into their rugby's. Um, well, Nathan's a big one on the rugby. Um, yeah, um, we went in to have dinner. 
I suppose you can probably hear how disappointed I was in this day. Went in to have dinner and I'm I'm fussy with food. Um, so I'm aware of how fussy I am. But even Nathan didn't like some of the stuff that was there. They, I mean, granted, it's... Um, Africa is a place where every part of an animal is used. Nothing is wasted. But it seemed like the only thing that was available was the bits that we don't eat. So all the offal which we don't eat was there. But you had, they didn't really have much in the way of pieces of meat. It was more pieces of waffle. Of offal, pieces of waffle. Pieces of offal. Um, they had rabbit. And they had like ox tongue, there was brains, there was, and it was just nothing really appealing. Nothing at all that was just appealing. We, I think we settled on some soup. Um, yeah, it was, it was just a hard one to do, a hard, hard one place to eat. Um, mine, we did go to the bar afterwards and we had bar snacks, which was, which did us, to, did us well. But while we were uh, cringe at it, while we were actually in the restaurant, the restaurant itself was filthy. Um, level of cleanliness is just not there. Level of pride in in themselves was not there either. You know, which was really hard to hard to look at and, and hard to see where the people just aren't proud of themselves where when we did when we did the met the Swazi the people in the village and we had our lunch there you know they were proud people they were very proud people I oh, know there is 70 um, so yeah but while we were there Oh, that's right. These ones stick stuck together. Hang on. While we were there, hang on. I'm just—I don't have a grinder. What I do works just as well. Um, <laughs> it's shocking when I'm struggling to actually say it. While we were there, a rat actually ran out of uh, the kitchen. So it, it fairly affected the appetite on um, wanting to eat. You know, not finding anything really nice to eat. And then actually thinking, oh, well, I'll try something. And then going, no, I'm not going to try anything because of the bloody rat. Um, yeah. Totally unimpressed with that place. Now, is that all there was of a seven? But we've gone from there. Um, we're going to have an early night. But Nathan's like, I oh, just wanted to go into the bar and chill and have a beer. And Nathan doesn't drink much. But it was just for him. So for him to go say he was going to go and have a beer. It was actually, you know, oh, well, definitely going to do it because he doesn't drink very often. Uh, so yeah, we went in to the bar and, you know, in Australia, there's no smoking inside yet. You go in this bar and everybody is, <coughs> everybody is smoking. So, um, <laughs> Nathan was really enjoying being able to sit inside and smoke, but he was also looking very uncomfortable at the fact that he was um, you get it's funny how when smoking ban, ban, smoking indoors was banned how much people were complaining about it and how hard it would be rowdy right and you know we've all adapted to it and then you get to a place where you can sit inside and smoke Nathan was very uncomfortable in um, and he he actually even moved away from where I was sitting while he had a cigarette. You know, he's so used to not smoking 
close to me. Um, well, not indoors anyway. It's a different matter in a car. But that's totally different. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but it was just... A disheartening day and we ended up just going well no we'll just go to bed we had an early night now <laughs> the shower the shower was rather interesting so it was uh, over the bath shower so you have to step into the bath to get into the shower I'm five foot two five foot three for me to get into the bath I actually literally had to hold on to the edge of the bar and hoist my leg up and over. The bath was so high up. It was so funny. And all I could think is, if I fall over, I'm in trouble here. Because that's that's just not, that's an easy fall at that, um, at that point. And then the actual having the shower itself. <laughs> this is how much accommodation can ruin and a place you stay. The shower itself was, the bath wasn't very wide. The shower, there was a shower curtain and, <laughs> I'm trying to work out the best way to put it. There's no best way to put it. When you were wet, the shower curtain stuck to you. But there wasn't much room, so whichever side of you was towards the shower curtain it got stuck to you and then what else? oh the plug in the bottom of the bath the plug in the bottom of the bath was chained so that nobody could steal the plug no issue there except the plug in the bath was actually in the middle of the bath which was where you stood for your shower so I kept stubbing my toe on this plug that didn't need to be in the bath. It could have just been, if they had a longer chain, oh no, if they had a longer chain, I would have still gotten caught up in it. But um, oh, it was just so ridiculous. So I've struggled with the shower that night and I struggled with the shower the next morning. Um, the other thing was double beds. So it wasn't, it wasn't single beds it was it wasn't two single beds it was two double beds so yet again Nathan and I have been stuck with two sleeping in two separate beds or trying to jam them together and there was no way could we jam that bed together um, so yeah that was that was the double bed wasn't even it wasn't even long enough my toes went over the edge so Nathan was significantly taller than me so yeah I can chuckle now I can so chuckle now but I can't I can't um, yeah I was horrified at other bits of it but I'm going to go back to the Swazi people because the Swazi tribe because they were fascinating absolutely fascinating with the way they lived and if you actually have a look at the re a look at my web page, you'll see photos of them and that. But one of the things that got me with them was the they were allowed to have they they practiced polygamy, so the man could have take a second wife and, and so on. But he always, for him to take a second wife, he had to have permission from the first wife to do so. Fair call. And the second, if, if she allowed a second wife, the second wife, her job was um, the cooking and the cleaning. The first wife just didn't have to do it. It all went to the second wife. Um, yeah, so there was two, you know, there's a, a good reason for saying, yeah, you have a second wife, you can you can have her and she can clean for me. Don't know whether that works, but some people would. Uh, but yeah, 
they yeah the, the 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 Swazi people in the village were really nice yeah we struggled with the Swazi people in in the hotel we stayed in um so we'll go on to the next day so we went Swaziland then the next was uh, St Lucia and surrounds 24th of September okay so I might have to stop a couple of times here because what I did do in um, on that day we we traveled and we did go to another park so another national park but we've <laughs> we've gotten up in the morning and the same porter that came and dropped her bags off picked them up and we've actually turned around and um, the night before we'd actually said to Craig about how we felt about the guy that brought our bags um, so the same porter came up to pick up our bags and he was very quiet very quiet uh, indeed Nathan didn't tip him Nathan refused to tip him because just he just didn't like him um, and I mean in Australia because Australian culture it is we don't tip unless we think somebody's done an exceptional so because we have minimum wage in Australia tipping is not expected um, so yeah this guy was Nathan was just not you didn't like him so he wasn't going to tip him at all um, but when we got on the bus <laughs> we saw Craig actually talking to him and handing some money over so I, I'm guessing the guys actually turned around and gone nah <laughs> he didn't tip so Craig's had to give him some money <laughs> um, but yeah so we headed off from there it was a pretty relaxed day eh? we stopped at um, a market on the side of the road they had um, knickknacks and candles and um, all sorts of stuff but I've looked at it and none of it really interested me and on the flip side of that when with Australia and our, our well I should not well our border security and our customs that border protection if you buy some certain products um, they can or will well they will they'll they will um, take possession of them and you have to pay for them to be um, treated I don't know yeah just in case there's any insects in in like wood products and that and they had a lot of nice wood products there but it's like I'm not buying anything of wood where I have to take it back to the country back home declare it have it fumigated was the word have it fumigated um, you know unless I came across something that really really did impress me but it was like I did like it but no okay so that's it for the nines so we oops spilling drills everywhere here turn around and oh gosh there we go we got back got on the bus and we headed off um, went through border security um, although there was no no man's land this time you were stamped in and out and in in basically at the same time gosh I've just got to found a drill that stuck to me okay so we've gone through border security and Nathan's made the interesting realization that if you actually walked about a hundred meters up the border line there was no fencing so it was just this border point that had the security 
yet if you walked around it you didn't need your passport stamped or anything um he was rather surprised at that he found it rather humorous it's like you know all these border checks yet they could turn around and just walk around it's like well you know not everybody recognizes the fact that there is borders or what a border is you know you don't people don't go to school and they over there or have the learning that we do you know, they're probably tra taught that you don't go there but not that it's because if you want to go there you have to have a documentation you know passports etc because you know if you're herding cattle on one side and it goes through the other side you can't go through border security to go and get them back you just go and get them back but yeah so um traveling along there was also we saw ghost mountain um <laughs> And the reason why it was called Ghost Mountain, um, the, the tribal elder in that area, the punishment for many crimes was death. But that death was only well, you were thrown off. You were thrown off Ghost Mountain. If you survived, you were innocent, and if you weren't, you died. So they say there's a lot of ghosts that roam around this this mountain, which is why it got called Ghost Mountain. Gosh, another one I didn't have many symbols of. Mine, I probably will find some. <sighs> so yeah, after Ghost Mountain, we went to Wimpy's, and we've decided that Wimpy's is the best thing out. In South Africa their foods are amazing cheap amazing and the service is brilliant did I need I didn't even need to get that out that's clever isn't it um, so the service when peas and the food it's just phenomenal you just can't get food like it not not that price not in Australia not with that service yeah but you still you, you did tip there you definitely did tip there they earned their tips so pardon me our next stop was actually um shushlui infolza i still can't pronounce it um not spelt with a with an s or anything it's spelt with a h but that was where we went to next um, our our guide our driver on our vehicle he was his name was patrick so his english name was patrick um it's just that's one thing that's really surprising you know, that even now this this day and age they get their <coughs> people out there get their their names and then they have to have an english name as well just because um the english speaking pe people to make it easier for them to say names um but yeah we went into the shushlui national park and um it was really cool really cool to see now i will give you some video footage for there we had just trying to find sorry i'm pulling up my videos while i'm talking trying to pull up the videos while I'm talking to you twenty fourth of September we saw some amazing amazing animals um, white rhinos black rhinos our first animal we saw was not alive it was a baboon it was on the it's just on the side of the road or the dirt track and 
Nathan's turned around and said, oh, a road kill, somebody's run it over. And Patrick's turned around and said, no, that's not road kill, that, that's a baboon fight. Um, it was a ter ter territorial fight. So the, um, yeah, that baboon obviously lost the fight. But we've gone around and seen, what did we see? Oh, it's just... So bear with me while I, if I look at the photos, I can tell you the way things went as we went along. So we've seen the roadkill and then we've come across some warthogs and to, <laughs> the, the, the one woman that we had just couldn't get the understanding of a warthog. She was calling it a water hog. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's a wart hog because of it's got wart what looks like warts on the on its face, which is why it's a wart hog. But yeah, we saw this these wart hogs first um so they were the first living animals we saw. And then we've come across, um, we're just driving along and we've just seen these rhinos in the distance. And then, <coughs> excuse me. And then from there we've come across um, the, was it the, the rhino, was it the baby we saw for, rhino with the baby? No, we saw zebras first um, with their little foal and then we saw a big group of giraffes. We call uh, mountain zebra smaller mm -hmm. but you can find them in Cape Town. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a species you know, don't yeah. Oh, they're two. Yeah. So when you go to Africa they talk about the big five um, and then you also have like your bucket list of animals you wanted to see. In Kruger, we hadn't seen any giraffes and it was the giraffes that I wanted to see. And we got to see giraffes. We got to see lots of giraffes. But yeah, they were pretty cool. Let's see if I can throw some pictures of giraffes in of these giraffes, maybe even some video footage. This one is about a year old. Oh, really? Also, this one is about a year old. Of, uh, zebra. You know that giraffe? They seem like a cow. They've got four of stomach. That's oh, why they, are, they, yeah, they can spend like three or five hours a day to rest. Okay, to, to digest. Yeah, yeah, to digest. Um, the giraffes and the the, the giraffes and the, and the zebras were all together so they were just in one spot with all the all these these they were just quietly cohabitating together it was cool driven on a lo little bit longer and along a bit and there was they had some old buffalo or ox or something there no buffaloes um, and you know from very old ones there going by their horns yeah. mm, the dangerous okay. game animal lion, lion elephant and, and a leopard, leopard. leopard. 
Which has a big pie? Elephant, Again. lion, leopard, cake buffalo, and and then the next thing we see as we're driving along is this rhino and the driver's stopped and he's pointed it out to us and this rhino is just kicking stuff up and he's he, you know we stopped and he says just watch and what do you see and like we weren't really noticing much and then he was like that rhino is actually marking his territory what they do is as they poo they kick their back legs and spread the poo out behind them and so we've all just gone and looked closer and got our cameras and zoomed in to watch this rhino poo and kick it around to put his scent around and then the driver goes, but wait, he will walk off now and he will spray his wee all over the place. So we've sat in there just watching this animal poo and wee and spray his scent all over, all over the place to mark his territory. Um, which, yeah, it was just, it, it was just fascinating to see that that was... That's the only way they mark their territory. He's gonna mark their territory there. Oh. Go on, Sam. <laughs> yeah, it's marking the territory now. Gonna spray the back legs. With, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, kick the back. I mean, the dung with the back legs. Oh. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, yeah, it keeps the scent under the feet. That's a dominant bull, oh. marking the territory. Like dogs. Mm -hmm. Male dogs do the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. See it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I don't think we need to do a continuous oh. shot on that. I'll wait till he finishes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's marking, yeah, it, it, it keeps the scent under the feet. Yeah. Keep the scent under the feet. Marking again. Look at this. It's gonna spray. See? Oh. Spraying now. Oh. Marking the territory. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Just animals in general and their behaviours. Rather interesting. So I will throw. I think I have some footage of him. If I don't have footage of him, I'll at least put a picture of him in there. Um, and then we've just drive driven along and. <laughs> I spotted something out the corner of my eye and we got him to stop and what we came across was a rhino with her car so we sat there with that one looking at that for a while so three year old probably same as big as mom And then you get this excitement over the radio. And after the first time we heard excitement on the radio, we knew that the way this was going, this excitement meant that something's going on, there's something to go and see. Oops. Whoops, that happened. Um, so we've suddenly just taken off. It's like, okay, something's happening. Your know, radio's going off and something's happening. And there was... What we managed to see was a bit of two lions chasing a warthog. So we actually saw a hunt. The lions didn't catch it. 
but we actually got to witness a bit of a hunt where the lions you could see from where we were we could see the lions coming and and um basically prowling very quietly prowling and stalking um up to this warthog and we could only see one and our guides turned around and he's pointed out this other spot to the side to the right and he's gone that's his brother his brother's there and they're hunting as a pair and then next thing you know you just see this lion take off and then you suddenly see the second lion take off and you just see dust and this warthog bolts and um the lions missed out he bolted and he got away so there's a few of us going yay he got away and then there's nathan going no i wanted him to catch it <laughs> he wanted to actually see a lion catch or an animal catch its dinner basically so he was a bit disappointed in that but then we turned around and the, you you got there and you just watched the lion and the lion one of the lions just dropped basically huffed and dropped and the guides turned around and said well he's just used up a heap of energy so now he's too tired to even continue to follow where that warthog went so yeah that was um pretty cool that was you know the things you get to see it was really good pardon me and then after that we saw more rhinos there was quite a lot of rhinos in this park i don't know whether they were black or white rhinos and then as we're coming back to where our our bus was because we've gotten in one of the big one of the four-wheel drive vehicles we got back to the bus on the way back to the bus we just could see this herd of elephants just walking along you know heading to their next next location just casually going it was really cool to see it's all amazing to see but yeah so from there we left there and then we went to was it Umfalozi? We say the Umfalozi, I think. Uh, Pradia Hotel at the Umfalozi River. Um, this is where we had amazing dinner. It was beautiful dinner, beautiful dessert. Um, it was bay marie style so it was help yourself but it was all really good and the desserts was really yummy um nathan absolutely gorged himself on desserts and i think because the night before we'd had such a shit night's food that made that lot taste even better um oh internet now because one of the things i did while we were away was update <laughs> update oh sorry just new stories coming through that aren't good um yeah with with the website that i do you know some of the places you're able to buy internet and you have it in the in your room this place um the only spot for internet was actually in the front in the reception area there was a lot of chairs there so you could sit there and get it but while there was nobody there the internet was pretty quick and then as people were coming for breakfast in the morning um yeah the internet slowed down but what was it about that place that we found weird ah the layout we got lost because you're told, oh, you go this way, this way, and then this way, and turn right, and then turn left, and we, we got lost. It was quite a big place, so it's understandable. Our baggage was brought to us in 
in golf cars eh? because of the distance it was traveled um, so it's really cool to see you know we didn't get golf cars our baggage did but you know we had we got lost we started following our bags but they were going too fast for us to keep up so yeah basically we found someone and asked for directions <laughs> that was nice the rooms weren't too bad um, there they were quite nice Oh yeah. Ooh. How long have I been recording for? Ah, oh, 45 minutes. I suppose that's... I won't go any further. Um, because I'll put some video footage in which is going to make this a longer... A longer um, whip and chat. But I'm just trying to try and keep my whip and chat chats fairly short now. Um, so that you can it's not like oh, you know an hour two hours or whatever so yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed that story on the two days of um, our journey um, it's funny like some bits you forget and some bits have just come back so clearly um, and then how one thing one place can just dampen the whole everything else you may have experienced for the day because because the biggest thing you remember is the bad stuff like rats in, coming out of the kitchen <laughs> so yeah, i'll leave that there i will continue on doing this off camera um but hopefully you enjoyed that chat and i will talk to you another time bye